Today we're going to do a uh, tutorial on how I set custom weather for epic storing uh, flights in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And um, you know you can probably find some really great soaring if you know how to look at forecasts uh, in the uh, real-time weather. Um, and uh, that would be really cool, uh, but um, it, it, that it would be also difficult to find. And you know, we're we kind of have God mode here, so we're going to uh, we're going to set we're going to set the conditions that we that we want that are going to be really epic. First thing I'm going to do is find a really cool place to fly, and um, the Owens Valley of California is uh, the place to be. You can see it's this valley here. On the uh, uh, western side, we have the Sierra Nevada mountain range, and the eastern side, we have the White Mountains. And we just have some really cool terrain, really neat geography to fly, uh, a lot of cool stuff to see. And I've done some uh, real world uh, flying there, so I know this area. I've ridden my bike around here. Anyways, this is really awesome. So we're going to go to Lone Pine here. If you're looking at the map, where to find it. Uh, kind of uh, right around here, sort of just uh, just east of Fresno, and uh, not Manzanar Airport. We want to fly Lone Pine, and we'll fly out of runway 16. And I'll set that as departure, and I could set the flight conditions here, but um, I, I don't know if it's a bug. It's probably a bug. It seems that if I do that, and then I go into the game, then I actually load in, then I have to reset it. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna just load in right now. Yeah, so the uh, so the thermal model, um, you know, seems to be uh, seems to work, you know, pretty good, pretty uh, procedurally generated based on you know what the weather of the day is. I'm flying this custom uh, uh, discus here, which is a very cool uh, airplane. So let's go into. I'm gonna hit pause and let's go into the weather settings. What are some weather that produces epic thermals? Well, first of all, let's set it to summertime. July. Well, it was the Fourth of July, right? We'll go so we'll go for some fireworks today, and um, and at 12 p.m. noon time. So this is kind of peak uh, thermal activity time. Would be uh, 12, 1 p.m., uh, 2 p.m. in the middle of the summertime. That's when we tend to have the most thermal heating, the most uh, most energy for generating awesome thermals. Uh, we'll set a little bit of humidity. Uh, we're in the desert, so it wouldn't be that humid. And uh, generally seems uh, uh, lower pressure. Uh, some real weather gurus can probably uh, chime in. Um, but uh, just in my ex personal experience, our best soaring days seem to be on low pressure days. Uh, we want a lot of temperature. We want it to be really warm. Let's go like 104 degrees. Um, technically, you don't really need a, a lot of temperature to have thermals. All you need is a temperature gradient. You just need it to be uh, warmer down below than it is uh, up high, and because uh, warm air rises and relatively warm air rises. However, um, the the more solar heating, the more heat there is in the day. Also, generally, the more thermal activity. So our our, our biggest uh, soaring days typically are quite hot. The wind. So. If you're flying cross country and you're trying to get from point A to point B, generally you want a tailwind. Um, and we're going to fly north up the valley, so I'll set the speed about uh, about eight knots. Not super strong wind. Um, the uh, simulator, and I'll do the kind of the same for the gust. Um, I I kind of have the impression so far that the simulator tends to. If with too much wind, it will blow the thermals apart. They don't really stay together, and it's hard to climb in them. And that can be true in real life, although it can also be true that you can have a really strong windy day, and you can have really strong thermals that stay together, and you just drift like crazy downwind, which that would really be ideal for if you're trying to you know, cover a long distance. Um, but we have a sailplane with a crazy glide ratio, so we don't, we don't need an extra uh, a wind push. And um, okay, so now we'll set clouds, and I just I think it really doesn't matter which one of these you choose, but I go for the the middle one, and um, so I don't think we actually need clouds. I think it will it will show it will generate thermals without them. But soaring with clouds is generally more cool, and so the altitude bottom is basically your max altitude you can expect to get for the day. Although I've been able to climb right up it through clouds uh, in the sim. So uh, uh, maybe that's sort of realistic. It kind of depends. And this altitude is um, uh, AGL, above ground level, not mean sea level, I'm pretty sure. 
so where we're sitting right here in Lone Pine, the altitude is about 4,000 feet. We're in the high, high desert of California. So I'm going to set this to uh, 14,000. So that means I should be able to get to about 18,000, which is, uh, you know, the uh, Class A airspace. So it'll be sort of a soft ceiling for ultralights like hang gliders. I'm used to flying in the sailplane. We can go higher, but you have to have clearance. But we're in a simulator, so who cares? And um, altitude top, we're going to max that out because we want big, booming uh, cumulus clouds. So coverage, now we start to dial in the coverage here and um, and the density. So I like the density, it's pretty dark clouds at like somewhere around three or four. And now, now we're sort of going to kind of just tweak with the coverage and the scatter. So we want um, uh, a sort of a partially cloudy sky, not mostly like this. A sky like this will have uh, too much coverage to where we don't really have solar heating on the ground. So maybe we can see so we can increase the scatter. Still have too much, way too much coverage. We want like individual kind of small cotton ball-y looking clouds, kind of like here. All right, this is kind of in maybe a little less scatter, so they're sort of bigger. There we go. Right now this. I still might have a little bit of uh, too much coverage. Just like you're looking at the shadows on the ground. We don't want too much shading on the ground because that will uh, block uh, new thermal generation. Um, but we also want uh, the cl you know the shadows and the clouds help mark the thermals. So maybe a little bit less coverage. And um, yeah, from what I'm at looking at like right here, that looks pretty good. We can do show 3D thermals and. Um, and start to get an idea like, oh yeah, okay, there's a big boomer over there. <laughs> and uh, there's another one over there. And see, they're kind of feeding this cloud. And that's cool. I'm just going to turn those off because those are kind of cheating. And let's uh, let's go fly. And we're still paused, which is good. So on pause. And we got to go put the nose down. And we'll get some airspeed. Good. Okay, let's go left and uh, see if we can find that thermal that we had kind of marked. Now, pretty much ever underneath every one of these clouds, we should have a nice thermal. And we use the cheater mode to kind of identify that there was one in this direction, so we'll fly this direction and see if we can climb in it. If you're new to soaring flying, um, you know, the, the thing that obviously we're, we're trying to climb in thermals, and your first priority when you get off tow and you get airborne is to, as we say, is get established. You know, you want to find that first thermal and climb and get as high as you can. And then once you get up, then you can make a decision about, you know, where you're going to go. If you have a uh, flight plan or a, um, you know, a, uh, uh, a task to fly, then you can kind of start to worry about that. But first thing you got to do is basically get to the top of the lift. Once you're up high, then you have time. It's on time gives you you know the ability to make decisions and where do I want to go next you know maybe I want to hang out a little bit in this area before pushing on down range maybe I want to um, you know maybe the air is really turbulent and scary and I just want to land and get the hell out of there <laughs> and so that's kind of uh, it's kind of the strategy so we want to make sure we, we get up first that's kind of your first priority is getting up but also uh, in real life, you want to make sure you keep the uh, landing area or the airport on glide because if you don't get up in that first thermal, obviously you're going to have to land. Okay, you want to get in that thermal to where you can just maintain a bank angle and just climb at a nice steady rate. And you also want to fly generally in the thermal as slow as you can. I got a little bit too slow there. As you want to maximize your time in that lifting air. And we're climbing really nicely here now. 